Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, July 10th, and uh, here we are in the Atlantic watching what is now X Tropical Storm Chantal. This is no longer a tropical storm, uh, but an open wave moving near Hispaniola, and boy, it's been a, kind of a roller coaster with this storm for the last couple of days. Early this morning, uh, all of the thunderstorms actually collapsed with this storm for just a couple of hours and she quickly rebuilt them as you can see here uh, but uh, that couple of hours is all it took uh, the convection was all that was holding her low-level center together and keeping it closed and as soon as those thunderstorms went down her circulation opened up into an open wave and so all we have now is a sharp wave axis uh, moving over uh, Haiti now and moving in towards Cuba Jamaica and the southern Bahamas and uh, in a sense uh, we expected that this was kind of a possibility given that uh, I've been talking about for days now how she's going to struggle in here uh, given the trade wind divergence and the fact that the trade winds are so strong in the Caribbean in the month of July this is the time of year when they are usually the strongest and uh, she's been moving at 25 to 30 miles per hour this whole time it was going to be hard for her to strengthen all along uh, the problem was that she kept defiantly increasing her wind speeds over the lesser Antilles here and, and stubbornly maintaining a slightly closed circulation despite high pressures and uh, for that reason, I thought she was going to be a fighter and stay the same intensity that she was here until here. Uh, but she did succumb. All it took was a couple hours of the thunderstorms being absent, and she lost that circulation. And uh, as a result now, she's no longer a named storm. And she's also passing a little bit farther south uh, than she would have had she remained a, a coherent system. And uh, she's still bringing heavy rains to Hispaniola. The effects for this region right here really haven't changed, and heavy rain is going to spread all the way up into Cuba, the Bahamas, and Jamaica over the next couple of days. And uh, now we have to switch gears uh, to thinking about Chantal as a tropical storm to now thinking about having a vigorous tropical wave with lots of convection here moving over the greater Antilles and possibly being a development threat in uh, the area near Cuba and perhaps the eastern Gulf of Mexico if she gets that far west over the next couple of days talking about Chantal redeveloping, um, but when we put our mind in the framework of this forecast, uh, we're thinking about a tropical wave that looks pretty mean out here and still has to be watched as she comes in this region. Now here's the water vapor imagery, and uh, we're, kind of, we're kind of moving uh, into a different set of conditions for X Chantal right now. So far it's been the fast trade winds, as I've said, um, that have been negative for her. Now she's moving into a region north of the trade wind belt near the Cuban coastline here where the trade winds are a lot slower and uh, more from the northeast instead of straight out of the east. And this is more favorable for the system, however this land mass is in the way here with lots of mountains in Cuba, and that's not favorable. However, uh, she could try to develop a new low center either north or south of the Cuban coast. That's the problem now with having a long wave axis is a new low could try to develop just about anywhere in this region as she moves west-northwest in the northwest over the next couple of days. And then the water vapor imagery here shows that there's still an upper low near south Florida that is kind of shearing uh, this area a little bit from the west-southwest and that could hamper redevelopment as well. The shear is not really that strong and probably not as unfavorable as the trade winds have been for Exxon. Uh, but uh, it is an, a negative factor all the same. If we look at the model tracks here, you can see, again, a general bend to the northwest is expected as an upper-level trough that you can't quite see on the water vapor yet starts digging down into the eastern seaboard and then splits off an upper-low over the Gulf of Mexico. Should help to reel her uh, northwestward here towards this general area. A little bit farther west than uh, was originally thought. Some of these models here are probably going to be too far east, uh, but this general area here will see the tropical wave axis come through, bringing lots of heavy rain to Cuba, the Bahamas, and Florida, and uh, an area of low pressure could form anywhere in this area along the wave axis if conditions allow. She's obviously not as great of a threat as she was when she had a coherent circulation, but she may still have to be monitored for redevelopment in this area during the next couple of days. Now if we look beyond Chantal here, uh, she's going to be moving uh, towards the southeastern U.S., but we do have a couple more waves back here uh, that may still have to be watched. We're still in the, the MJO Phase 2 here, which is favorable for tropical waves that are just exiting Africa, and the central to eastern Atlantic is favored in that phase, and you can see here big tropical wave coming off Africa. This is the Lesser Antilles over here and uh, this wave will be coming westward. This is the one that was developed aggressively by the GFS during the last few days. It has since dropped development and the European does not show development either and that keeps its chances fairly low but it will still have to be watched as it is vigorous and there's uh, more waves behind here that will be coming off, all of them coming westward and uh, the pattern is still favorable for them to try to do uh, 
development, try to try to develop in this area a little bit earlier than usual this year. Uh, this is the GFS ensemble pattern for days 11 through 15. That's July 20th through 25th. Just to illustrate that we're continuing the pattern with the Azores High way off to the north here and generally lower the normal pressures in this area with the trade wind belt farther north than normal in the eastern central Atlantic. And this is favorable for the waves trying to do things like Chantal did much earlier than usual this year. Chantal really should not have developed if you look at July. Usually storms do not develop east of the Caribbean until August and September, usually late August to September. September. Uh, so this is very early for this kind of thing. And although she got blown apart in the Caribbean here, which is always unfavorable in July, um, uh, that, that doesn't mean that uh, the season is unfavorable in general in here. It means that we had activity early. And it means by the time the active part of the season does come around, this area of the basin may light up. And as we've talked about, there are several things that favor an active Cape Verde season this year. So that will be something to watch as time goes forward. For now, we will watch the remnants of Chantal here still bringing thunderstorms and heavy rain to this entire region and into some regions that have been really soaked already during the last couple of months in the southeastern U.S. And to her, uh, we will be watching her for redevelopment if conditions allow. And then after that, more waves behind. It'll probably quiet down for a little bit, uh, but there will be more waves to watch. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.